image of someone sat doing calculations at a desk by themselves. Yeah, we all wear hard hats and we all get greasy, get our hands dirty all the time. Which sometimes perhaps is true, but there's so much more broad opportunity in STEM than just that stereotype. That we're often siloed in our approaches. That you were really into academia when you were younger and that you always had a clear um, career route mapped out. Labeling people as techies or geeks or people of that kind of nature. Um, what I've found in my career path is that lots of people have gone on from the technical role and moved on into more leadership style roles and after we've ended up with some great leaders. Paul Hines, I'm the plant manager here at 3M. We manufacture um, PPE products, mainly respirators, uh, which you can see for COVID and other pandemics. It's been extremely busy for us over the last year and a half. I'm Lisa Fletcher and at 3M I'm a manufacturing technology engineer. So part of my job role is to look at um, equipment and machines that we have on site, look at cost improvements, waste reductions, uh, generally improving the um, process conditions of the machine. Uh, my name is Alice. Um, I've worked at 3M now for over a year um, and I am a graduate engineer and working typically on the data systems at the Acliffe site. Hi, my name's Sari. Uh, I am a manufacturing technology engineer at 3M. So I work on the production lines and I basically ensure that the process settings are what they need to be. Hi, I'm Jay Kalsachdev. I'm a senior project engineer here at 3M. Um, my job is essentially I'm a change agent. It's up to me to um, deliver changes from feasibility all the way to installation and commissioning. So my name is Joanne Santos. Um, I work as a product engineer now at 3M Maplin. So as a product engineer, uh, I'm responsible for the design of the product. We need to make sure that we are meeting the regulatory requirements, that we are keeping people safe. And any change to the product, I just need to make sure that it's not going to affect anything. What I love about my job in manufacturing is the variety of, of work. I've had the opportunity to work in various different roles i um, been here almost 22 years and every two years, two to three years, I've had a new role in some form or shape or other, but it's the variety that I really enjoy working, working with. The thing I enjoy most about my job is that um, sometimes there can be different things crop up, so you've really got to be able to be flexible and um, to react to new situations that happen, um, so every day isn't the same. Some are, but sometimes you've got to just jump in and, and roll with the punches. So what I like about the job now, um, it's changing all the time. So we never ever stop learning. When I think that I know everything, then uh, a different issue comes up or another opportunity comes up. So I, I guess the best part of the role is that I get to work with people from different backgrounds uh, every day. It's all about teamwork. Um, I also love that I get to work outside of my remit. For example, I do a lot um, around the diversity and inclusion sphere as well as doing a few things with 3M Pride, which is our LGBTQ um, employee resource network group here at 3M. One thing I really love about the job is you get to see the transformation of the raw materials into the finished product. So you get to see your ground plastics and your cover web coming into the area and leaving as a finished filter, which I find really satisfying. The best thing about my job is that I get to do something completely different every single day. So I'm often solving a problem that we might have come across last night or over the weekend, or I'll be picking together um, data to see where we can improve later on that will be different from something that I've done previously, or that someone else has tried to do previously to solve a problem. Yeah, so peer sector is something that can also be described as Industry 4.0 or the fourth industrial revolution. This is about disruptive technology coming in and really changing the game in the way that how we manufacture products. And it might not be in manufacturing, it could it can peer sector can kind of be in any any industry really. It's something that can really come in and shake things up. So, you know, some of the greatest inventions in the world you can probably think about were, were massive disruptors. And that's really what Peer Setter is all about.
So my current involvement in Paysetter is looking specifically at disruptive technologies. Um, the machines that I look after at the moment, we've got a various number of technologies on there, such as laser measuring, um, measuring heights of things, um, robotics, uh, four axis, two axis, um, and automation in general. So the, the future for me looking into um, our equipment is the end-to-end -end automation and how we can get something um, with, with limited uh, manual interaction. Currently in my area, we're looking to automate the packaging at the end of the line. So at the minute, we're manually packing filters into boxes and we're looking to get in a bit of equipment that will do that for us. So I'm involved in modernising the way uh, operators and technicians look at line data. Uh, we're using latest analytical technologies uh, for maintenance and engineers to look out for their biggest manufacturing losses. I try to look at where the plant is going to be in the next 5, 10, 15 years and try to make decisions that, that stand the test of time. I'm getting involved in a lot of projects to try and bring the site up to an industry 4.0 which is a buzzword really for um, connecting all of our systems and using the, all this data that we can collect. I'm looking at where we can go um, for the whole of the site with those and what projects we need to do and therefore what, what steps we need to take to make sure that we're going to be the best in the business. I think working in a diverse team can really help you during a project because you get a lot of input from different backgrounds and different perspectives on the same issue and that can really let you see all the solutions to a problem as opposed to getting tunnel vision on your view. Working in a diverse um, team really helps me because it, it makes me appreciate um, the different um, ideas that other people around me have. Um, so all from different backgrounds we can bring something else, something else and something new to the team. Um, so we can really bounce some good ideas off each other um, to create a new way of thinking. Well, it's, it's been extremely interesting the last couple of years where the our company have really pushed hard diversity and inclusion um, quarter out of us and it's, it's been, it's something I always thought we did, we didn't. Uh, the last two years have really taught me about different cultures, um, different races, religions, sexuality and what some of those people have gone through. Being in a diverse team means that you work with people from different backgrounds, different identities uh, and different walks of life which means you unlock new ways to be creative. It helps me feel welcome. As you might have noticed from my accent, I'm Brazilian. Um, and in a daily basis I deal with people from France, Zimbabwe, the UK, uh, the US, Australia. So I feel really welcome. Um, and then people have different cultures. Uh, I really love uh, learning about different cultures. So yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, I really enjoy it. Getting all different opinions from different types of people is really important. So being in a diverse team is a really good way of getting that. You might get um, opinions from people who are older than you, younger than you, come from different backgrounds, and it will make sure that you're all thinking about things that maybe you haven't thought of and asking questions that will cover all all our bases really so that we're not missing anything and we're getting the best solution. I'm trying to keep things a bit light-hearted but I'm also quite firm I would say so I try and make sure that we keep some timelines but also where we can we're having a bit of fun so that everybody feels comfortable um, to give their opinion and ask any questions really so that everyone's on the same page. I had a short history in door-to-door -door sales so I have uh, a bit of experience breaking through that initial barrier when you're talking to people and building rapport quickly, which is something you need to do quite often in the workplace as you're working in between teams and coordinating projects. Sometimes people can get lost in the details and the complexity of many projects we have on site because they are complex. So I think that sometimes I'm able to take a step back and look at the big picture and really refocus the whole team on what is the end goal. So I was told I'm very detailed, like I, I pay attention to all the details and I don't like to control things. I like to deliver the products on time. My background was in maintenance, um, so I've maintained a lot of the equipment on the site already, um, which gave me a brilliant process um, engineering background. I certainly didn't expect to be plant manager. That wasn't, 
that really wasn't on my radar when I started here 22 years ago as a maintenance fitter. I expected I was going to be on shifts um, working on machines for the rest of my life and I was quite happy with that. I, I enjoyed my job. No, I didn't expect to be in this job when I was younger. I actually wanted to be a vet because I really enjoyed spending time with the pets that I had at home and working with animals. But since I've found myself in this role, there's actually a lot of transferable skills from what I imagine I would use as a vet. There's a lot of active problem solving while I'm in the workplace. And although it's not quite the same as dealing with puppies on a day-to-day -day basis, there's definitely a lot of satisfaction to be out here as well. So having, a, having an attitude of kind of saying, yes, I'll have a try and I'll go for that. I think that's really helped my career. Um, but I, didn't ex I never expected to be a plant manager. It was probably about 10 years in that I realized that actually I enjoyed the leadership of people. And I've always said this is, you've got to go to work. Everybody has to go to work. You might as well try and be the best that you can be while you're at work. I didn't expect that I'd end up in this um, job when I was younger. I always wanted to be a nurse, um, like my mum. Well, I don't really think you know necessarily what you're going to do um, when you're at school. I had this vision of maybe being a helicopter pilot or going into um, lots of maths or lots of spreadsheets, perhaps. Um, but when I went to university, I got the chance to look around the factory. And as soon as I did that for the first time, I knew that's what I wanted to do. definitely lefty loosey righty tighty it's a fail sir <laughs> in all seriousness i did learn that i can do anything if i put my mind to it um over the years i've, I've faced challenges that i just thought i'm, I'm just not good enough for this or I, I just can't do it no matter what i do um, and it's just wrong I, I can do anything if i put my mind to it as a kid i was very curious and inquisitive um, and i try and carry that even now uh, to this day stormy season make good sales uh, and when you're kind of really in the thick of it and you're going through a tough time at work, or it may even be home as well, um, it's actually you, you don't learn anything if you don't get challenged and test yourself. And uh, sometimes you'll, you'll test yourself, other times you'll be tested by others. Typically, you might get told, oh, the stereotype engineers are men. They're not. That's just maybe what you've been told or what someone thinks, but that's not necessarily true. So go and push those boundaries and do whatever you want because. You can go out there and be whoever you want to be. Just be confident in yourself, really. That's probably what I learned when I was in school. Perseverance when you're confronted with an obstacle. So, oftentimes when you're challenged and something goes wrong, it's easy to look at that as a failure and uh, it's about time you gave up and tried something else. But I think learning to push through that and see that as an opportunity to improve is a skill that you're going to use for most of your life. I learned that maths, it's just to develop logical thinking. When we look at maths, a lot of people might be scared of, oh, I don't want to do engineering, I don't want to follow this because, because of maths. It's purely just to develop logical thinking and we use it all the time. Looking back on my career, I've made a few decisions that I wasn't particularly happy about that got me stuck in jobs that didn't really have a future. So I found myself a couple of times working in places where I knew there was no opportunity for me to grow beyond the role that I was in. So I guess keep an eye out for the path ahead as well as what you're currently doing would be one of the things I'd focus on if I could go back in time. I wouldn't have been so scared to rock the boat. In my placement year at university, I worked for a company where I chose not to come out as LGBTQ in the workplace and I think that really hampered my productivity uh, and I, I'm really glad that here at 3M I can bring my full self to work every single day. The future of STEM is bright. <laughs> I think the future will incorporate a lot of data systems but not only just data systems it will be making sure that we are using the data that we are collecting um, to, to improve our systems um, and it will be a lot more of that behind the scenes automated um, technology. I think it's got a massive future if you think about the industrial revolution the industry 4.0 that's happening now 
it's amazing. I've seen factories that can be built into shipping containers and shipped around the world. And while they're being shipped around the world, they can be manufacturing in, inside that crate. I believe everything's getting more and more automated. So it's only going to grow. We can say now that even in um, medicine, everything we are trying to automate, even the doctors, what can be done without having a person physically there. Um, especially through the pandemic, we, we have seen how important it is and that's the future. The future of STEM looks great and I'm really excited to be a part of it. Um, in recent years, I think we've seen um, technology uh, and engineering advance so much. We've seen um, how much it's affected our lives, um, from video calling to, to meetings online. I think we've just realised that we, we do rely on STEM. There's a lot of exciting things happening in STEM. And as computer systems are growing in complexity and we're getting a better handle on data in general and how we control it, we're seeing a lot of improvements in industry. not to focus so much on the activities that you're doing at school and the exercises that you're having to do, like passing exams and that kind of thing, because I used to get quite hung up on, oh, this grading system might not be the best judge of my character. I think it's about learning the skills and learning how to work through your problems and then that is what you're going to use in the future. Don't let there be any boundaries. Go and explore something because you enjoy it. And, and by enjoying something, you know that you're going to put in everything to it and really get the most out of kind of the job or the, the career or the, the choice of degree even that you decide to do. Be curious on the technical side of things. When you find something cool, try, try to bring it into work. The other side of it is don't forget about the people. The world is changing, so be open to the unexpected, be open to change. Don't fear change. Change always comes with um, self-knowledge, um, a lot of new skills, um, and usually new friends. So yeah, don't fear change. That's when you learn the most. Um, not to let anything stop you from doing or being anything that you want to be. Um, with dedication and drive, there should just be no limits.